Hello creative friends, this is Joy coming to you with some tags this time. So I have all of my dilution sprays, and Adirondack sprays, uh, Tim Holtz uh, distressing stains, and inks, and paints, and all the goodies, and I have these tags um, that I bought um, to just decorate, and actually I kind of had them for a while, but just never really did anything with them. And I, my intent was to have this live narrated, but by the time I got done narrating the process and then um, fast forwarding the decorating, it was just way too long. I didn't think anybody would want to sit through a whole hour video. So I decided to fast forward the whole thing and just explain it. So here, as you could see, I was just using uh, the Tim Holtz distressing inks and a dauber to put some color on this tag and I sprayed water on it to see if I could get the ink to activate and kind of blend a little bit better but it didn't really act the way I was hoping it would so then I just decided to rub the ink on my mat spray it with water and then blot it up and then I did a quick dry and then went back into it again a second time to try to blot up any excess ink and so basically I just spent, you know, going through the time, going through and putting color on all these pages. And here I'm putting some, dropping some alcohol ink on the page because I decided I wanted to try to have it be a little bit more mottled. And it was a little too dry, getting a little too dry, so I sprayed it with water and then did some more drips of alcohol ink. So here I'm using some different uh, sprays dilution sprays on this tag and then some water and letting the ink just run and then I'm putting salt on the tag and as you see I put on gloves because I tell you all this stuff will stain your hands and then here I'm showing you a close-up of that one tag after you know it dried somewhat and I'm using another blank tag just to kind of clean up the mess and actually you'll see me using this tag several times as I clean up ink and it was really interesting how it turned out. So here I decided to take some of this uh, Adirondack ink and kind of swirl it around on my mat because I still was not completely happy with that tag and then I just kind of laid it down and pressed it in the ink and then got the swirly marks on there which by that you know time I did that I was happy and then I used my clean up tag to clean up any leftover ink and then I grabbed another tag here and here I'm using the Tim Holtz uh, distressing stain so I decided to try that on the tags and I figured it'd be better to put it on my mat like I did before and it doesn't look like much you know that I'm getting on there but it is very pigmented and strong and then I spray it with water and kind of swirl the tag around in the ink. And I really like the way, and here I'm using the alcohol just to put drips on this tag again. And I really like the way all of these tags turned out. They turned out really cute in the end. I thought they were pretty, they turned out pretty neat. And then I dry it and then go back into any leftover ink that's still on my on my table and then I use my cleanup tag to clean up any leftover so here I decided to take a wax crayon or you know wax um, yeah crayon I guess is what it is and put some swirls on this tag to act as a resist I mean you could do like any kind of you know design but you know, I decided to do swirls on this tag. And then I take my uh, delusion sprays and spray the tag with some pink and some purple. And I'm trying not to spray everything in sight, but, you know, it's really hard not to <laughs> when you start getting these sprays out. And then spray a little water to help move that color around. And here, cleaning up with my cleanup tag some of this ink that's on my table 
And that starts to, you know, looking really interesting. And then I spray water and I grab another tag and figure, well, there's still a lot of color there. So I try to clean up the rest of that color as best I can with the tags. So here I grab another tag and I end up in the end, um, I end up doing 10 tags. And I decide I'm going to use three different, you know, shades of this uh, Tim Holtz uh, ink pad. So I have like a red, a pink, and a purple. But the thing is, is the red and the pink, like the pink looks really light, but it looks almost like the same color as the red. So it didn't quite, you know, turn out to be much different. <clears throat> and then I, I used the purple to cover the rest of the tag. And I kind of went over the red a little bit. And then here I spray it with some water to try to get the ink to move around a little bit and blend. And I set that one aside to dry. So here I'm trying to decide what do I want to do on this tag. And I end up doing a couple of different colors of spray. And I smoosh that around on my table to try to get the inks to blend. And I really like the process of, you know, wiping up ink, drying, and wiping up again. I just think it turns out really cool. So here, I really like this pink tag, but you'll see I decided to use some of these uh, distressing stains on it. And it didn't do a whole, it did a little bit to this, which was interesting. But um, I wanted to do more. Um, actually, I don't know if it was that one or another one, but you'll see one of these pink tags. I kind of overdo it with the ink the spray ink. So here I decide, okay, I'm going to use like three different types of products. So here I use the ink pad and then I use the distressing stain and then I use the spray. Maybe this was where I kind of, the spray overdid it. No, actually it looks like I did, didn't do too bad there. But I think one of them, it does, the spray ends up just completely overbearing the whole tag. Yep, that was it. <laughs> I was on a roll, and then I did that, and then I was like, wow, that was not supposed to happen. So that spray, I think it was like midnight blue or something, is very, very strong. And actually, I have used this particular color and spray on it. And this is a good thing where I was like, I am glad I have my gloves on. And I dripped some... Uh, ink some um, alcohol on this one as well but I've used this um, same color and spray uh, in an art journal page and it just like seeped through everything uh, so it's definitely strong so here I'm using like kind of a brown dark brown distressing stain to try to add a little bit something extra to it which I liked it after that after I finished that and then I took this tag and I just did a very light spray, just very, very light. You can see there, and it just put some little speckles on it. And so then here's another one where I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to put some something different to make it a little more interesting. So I took the distressing stain, uh, some brown, and put on that one. So here's the one with the salt. Now I'm rubbing off the salt and trying to get the all the salt off of this and then you'll see it kind of does a really neat effect on the tag so here I'm showing you all the tags I think I did 10 maybe I did 8 no I did 10 and um, I got them all colored up now and the, the, one in, the one there in the middle is the one that I was cleaning up all the other ink on and then here, there's still some of the tag showing through, so I'm just taking, you know, a dauber and some ink and going around just to cover up the last little bit. And the same with that tag that I used for cleaning up. Um, it still had some little bits of, uh, of the tag showing through, so I just went around those areas 
and finish coloring the rest of the tag. So if you miss any areas on your tags, and that's why I left this part of it in, it's really easy to just go and, you know, cover those up. And so then I decide that to put, um, like, some color around each tag. And I did black on some of the tags. I did dark blue on some of the tags. I think I did some red on some of the tags. So I go through all the tags and edge each one with some color whether it be black, red, or dark blue. So that's what I'm doing here, is just kind of putting some color on, on each of the tags. And also, I don't um, show it on camera, and you'll see here in a minute, um, I do go through my stash and um, all of my ephemera that I have, and I kind of figure out what I want on these tags and so you'll see that uh, here any minute now it'll it'll uh, you'll see all the tags with the ephemera that I chose to put on these tags and I don't put I didn't put um, any words on any of the tags because I figured I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with these tags um, you know, may use them on a journal page. I don't know. I'm not sure. They may just go, you know, in um, in a uh, junk journal or something like that. Um, you know, whenever I whenever I decide what I'm going to do with these tags, then I may add some words to them. So here, the second part, um, after putting on some color, I decide to use some modeling paste on some of these tags. So here I'm just using some modeling paste through a word stencil. And I used uh, modeling paste through a circle stencil. I think I did three different tags with modeling paste, um, you know, just to kind of, I didn't want them all to be the same, you know, with the same things on them. I did some with modeling paste, some with uh, some embossing powders and stamps, which you'll see that. And then here's the third one where I have uh, this, this script stencil that I decided to um, use a piece, a part of it on this one tag with the modeling paste. And after you use the modeling paste, you know, you have to wash your stencils, um, you know, pretty much right away and or else, you know, it could ruin your stencils. And then here I'm scraping off any um, parts that I don't want on the tag. It's easy to scrape off as soon as you're done, you know, you put it on there. So then these three tags, I decided to use uh, just the distressing inks through some stencils to kind of add a little bit more interest to the background. So that's what I'm doing here. Going through all of uh, my stencils, I grabbed a whole bunch of stencils out of my stash and figuring out which what I want to use on which tags and colors and stuff that I wanted to use on these tags. And that one you can't see very well, but you can, in in you know the stencil I used is really pretty on there. It's just a faint light background. And then of course I really love this stencil, the numbers. Hopefully you can't hear that air conditioner in the background. It's kind of noisy. Um, anyway, all of these tags really turned out pretty cool. I thought you know they turned out really neat. And then here I grabbed a bunch of stamps and, and was using stamps on some of these backgrounds as well, just to kind of add more interest to them. This one I decided I wanted to, you know, add more um, uh, stenciling to it. So that's what I'm doing here. Just a little more stenciling to add some more interest. So I kept working um, on these tags with stencils and stamping until I was happy with you know, the bat, the backgrounds of the tags. And this is another stamp um, that I used on this tag. Uh, it's Gears. Like I said, I originally had recorded this to where 
you know, it would be a live um, narration, but it was just too long. I'm like, I don't want to sit through, wouldn't want to sit through an hour of that. So I fast forwarded everything and decided to narrate it uh, after the fact to make it to where it's not so long. I love this circle, these circle stencils. Well, actually, it's different shapes. And as you can see, I use the circle one a lot because <laughs> it's got a lot of paint on it. Um, but these are interesting shapes. I don't even remember where I got these stencils. I can't think I got them from Walmart or someplace. So again, I just am going through my stamps and stencils and just trying to find. And since I had some some swirls on this one, I thought a circular stamp would be interesting on that. So that's why I decided to use that circular stamp on that one. So I was happy with those two. And now I have these the, these uh, other two here tags that I felt like, you know, should have something uh, more on them. The one is uh, where I did some, some um, modeling paste. And the other one uh, was just where I did splatters on it and decided to do some dragonflies. And I try to stamp a little bit off on some of them. It just makes it more interesting if you stamp them off the uh, tag. And trying to decide, do am I happy with them? Do I need to add more? And I don't recall. Yes, I guess I do add more. I think to the dragonfly one, I had some of these pretty circles. And I try to stamp those off as well. So there is all the backgrounds for the tags, and I'm just looking through to see, do I need to do anything more? Am I happy with them the way that they are? And this one here seemed like it just needed some more, something else. And this stamp I really like because it's like a crackle. It looks like crackle, and so that's that's always fun. So I decided to use that on, on that uh, tag that I used to clean up all the other paint with. Now here I'm trying to uh, decide which ones that I wanted to um, do the embossing powder. I decided to do embossing powder on a couple of the stencils. And so this one I decided I'm gonna put a rose on, that rose stamp on it. So I'm making sure that there's no residue on, this, on the tag. And I ink up my stamp, put it on there and then put the black embossing powder is what I decide to do on this tag. And I use a paintbrush and tap the back of it just to get off any excess that, um, you know, might be on the tag. And then I heat it, heat emboss it. And you heat it up until you start to see it kind of get shiny and melt. And then here's another tag. I decided to also do some, um, embossing on and I decided to use this lady actually I got this lady <clears throat> at a uh, flea market so I inked her up stamped her on and um, on the tag and decided to use white for her some white embossing powder and I do the same as far as tapping the back and using the paintbrush to brush off any excess and then heat embossing it as well first couple of times I tried this heat embossing I don't think I heated it up long enough or to melt it and it didn't quite work but I think I figured it out so here um, is where you can see all the elements that I found in my stash and that I wanted to put on these tags and some of these elements I decided to use the foam dots on like for this one I want it to you know have some dimension so I use the foam dots on the back of uh, this balloon that I decided to put on the tag. And again, um, like I said, I don't really put any words on any of the tags except for, of course, that one that I did the um, modeling paste through the stencil. It's got words, but uh, 
I decided that, you know, I'm not sure exactly at this point what I'm going to use the tags for, so I'm just going to make the tags and have fun making the tags and, you know, decide later what I'm going to use them for. And as you saw there, I kind of used the edge of the foam adhesive. It was thin enough to put it on the tail of that dragonfly because I wanted that dragonfly to be uh, dimensional. And I've got this quick dry glue and these quick dry uh, dots that I decided to use to adhere any other elements down on the tags with. So I put the dots on there and then use the glue on the smaller areas and around the edges where the dots weren't covering uh, to make sure that I got this, you know, glued down and adhered good to the tag. And then I have, you know, that one pretty much done. I end up trimming the flower up when I get done, you know, after it dried a little bit, but that one's pretty much done. And here's a bird for this tag with a bird cage. So I'm trying to figure out where the bird needs to go in conjunction to the bird cage and then adhering the bird cage down. The bird cage is actually vellum, so of course anything I use on it needs to be clear and those glue dots uh, work great because they are clear and here's another uh, vellum piece it's a butterfly that I thought would look you know cute on this tag here so I used the glue dots on that as well and an end um, as you can see I, I'm using glue dots on some of the other elements you know, with the glue to try to adhere them down to the tags. So yeah, this um, video was actually going to be like, you know, an hour long and it's like, no, that's just too long. So I shortened it up as, as best as I could and, you know, got it within a half hour, um, which I thought, well, that's not too bad considering, you know, that it, you know, shows tech several techniques and you know in the end I end up with you know 10 tags you know that are really cute I think they all turned out really cute not sure again what I'm going to do with the tags but they're all decorated and made up for you know whatever I decide to use them on so here's a vellum piece I put down and a bird and then a butterfly and I decided to use the foam uh, dots on the butterfly to make this, the butterfly a little more dimensional. And again, um, I use the edge for the center because it's thin enough. So I figured I could have just put it down without putting anything in the center, but then the center, I don't know, might collapse potentially. So at least that way it's, it's covered as well. So I used the whole, all of the, the adhesive dots. I had this one adhesive dot, um, and this here, I'm cutting parts of this off. I decided that I didn't need um, all of the pieces that were on here. So that's another thing too. You can always like adjust, you know, your pieces to fit whatever your needs are. But uh, I had this one, uh, these foam dots where they were like little circles that you kind of punched out, but then you had the whole outside around them that, you know, I was able to cut up into pieces and use as well. So I use, try to use everything and a vellum butterfly that I put on that. And then here I'm trimming some of the pieces off that are overhanging the edge of the tag. And this particular piece, that camera is a vellum piece, and then the gears are wooden. So I'm using the heavy quick dry glue to adhere the gears down on this tag. Cause, you know, you want to make sure that they adhere down good and they stay. And then I think I use a glue dot to adhere the um, vellum camera to the top of those uh, gears on that tag. 
And then the last piece, I, or the last tag, I believe this is the last tag, I decided to use the little foam dots uh, on the backs of these little flowers. Put those on the bottom of this tag. I thought they would be really cute. And then a little wooden bird that I sprayed with some turquoise paint and used some craft bond glue to, to hold that on there. And that bond glue is pretty good. It holds on just about anything. Oh, nope. I think this is the last tag. So I had these butterflies uh, in my stash that I decided to add to this other tag. And I decided to put it on a paper towel so I didn't spray everything and have a big mess to clean up. So I decided to give it a minute to let the ink soak in and then tap off any excess wet ink that was on there and then put those on this tag. I think these uh, butterflies are from Prima if I remember correctly. A lot of my things like the um, a lot of the ephemera and the little um, come some of the ephemera on some of these tags the butterflies and flowers and things came from K, uh, K and Company but some of the things like the camera that's a vellum piece and the the bird cage and stuff I believe is it is from a Tim Holtz ephemera pack so there I just used a black sharpie to put little antennas on the butterflies and the dragonflies and here um, I have the Tim ta 10 tags and I'm going through like my ribbons and my you know um, I don't know what you would call this uh, it's, it's like a little fabric ribbon thing and figuring out uh, what I want to put uh, what ribbon I want to put on these tags so I'm just cutting a, a piece you know of ribbon as you can see there folding it in half putting it through the hole and you know just quick and simple didn't really do anything fancy um, like any bows or anything like that so I just kind of grabbed all the ribbon I could find um, and threw it on my table and just kind of went through to see what matched what and um, after this you'll see at the end that I do show you some close-ups of some of these tags so that way you can get a little closer look at, at the tags and the backgrounds and stuff I mean they really turned out cute but that's pretty much you know the video for today and the 10 tags that I ended up creating uh, again I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with them but I'll figure something out to do with them and this ribbon I decided to cut like a little V in the end of the of the ribbon but if you like this video you can hit the like uh, button or if you'd like to see more of my videos you can hit the subscribe or you can leave me a comment I would love to hear from you and here I decided to put a couple of ribbons together I thought well you know I'm getting bored with one let's try two <laughs> so I did that on a couple of these last tags put like two two ribbons on them and I believe this one here I also decided yes to double up and put two ribbons but I think they all like I said turned out really cute oh and raffia I was trying to remember what did I do on the last one and I put the raffia yep that's right just different options for different tags you know that way they're all kind of personalized and different but I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope this gives you some inspiration and some ideas for making your own tags and I'll show you the 10 tags again and detailed uh, close-ups at the end so you guys have a good week and we will talk to you again soon bye bye